So I've got this herring body profile from Bullshad. It's six inches with the tail, so it's a six inch bait. I've got the eyes taped and I've already got primer. One note on the primer. Yeah, bit the bullet. I'm paying more these days. But everybody that's ever told me that Golden is awesome, you guys were all right. And I should have listened to you a long time ago. And it's a little bit less chalky than the other whites that are out there, especially the opaques, for some reason. When producers make the color white, when they tint that, it has a tendency to be very chalky. So just a FYI, it's a little bit more expensive. I think for this 16 ounce bottle, I paid about $30 for it. Priming is gonna go a little bit further. I guess you can thin it, reduce it. I like mine a little bit thicker. Um, simply because I'm usually covering a brand name or something else these days. As you can see, one coat of Golden versus one coat of Createx. Huge <laughs> difference. Wow. And I just shot Createx straight from the bottle. You can see that you can still see that little shad dot on there. Even though this is a herring body, it was painted up like a shad. That's how it comes right from Bull Shad Warehouse in the back here. So mega mega difference. I hope the camera picks that up but it is ginormous difference so I would say worth every penny on the price and that is the quick tip for the day. And we've got this primed and ready to go. I am going to use a couple of different techniques today. I'm going to be using some stencils and I've got a couple picked out. These are both from the Model Anarchy UK stencil. I never say that in the right order. I'm so sorry, Brian. But Anarchy Model UK, his stencil collection. A little bit of modeling, M-O-T-T-L-E-I-N-G. And the reason that we're going to do that is because if you guys have ever seen a juvenile burbot, which is if you guys are just joining the show, that's what we're doing today. We are actually going to make something. I haven't done one. I, you know, here's the problem. I have been filming, but I haven't had a whole lot of time to edit. Because now we're starting to get into painting for the classic, which is pretty labor intensive. It takes up a good bit of time, and that's a good thing. It's a good problem to have, but filming is one thing. Editing the filming is something completely different. So just so you guys know, I have been filming. This is the Burbot series. You guys asked for this bait. I know we're a little bit beyond the winter when you guys would normally be finding these. Ice fishing, they're common. Let's talk about the burbot for a second. So the burbot is the only gadiformis or gadiform fish in the freshwater areas. It's similar to a bowfin, similar to how the snakeheads look. Same elongated body, but much more like their cousins, the cod and flounder. They have rays. So it's a basically it's the ray finned family of fish. Um, burbots fall under that category. You're going to more than likely find them when you're ice fishing, but people do troll for them. I've heard that they are absolutely delicious and you're going to find them in more temperate or colder waters. So that's your little factoid for the day on the burbot. So I'm just going to add the sepia color to my primed bait. Get a good coat. Now you see what's happening here. You see how I'm getting a little bit of issue. <laughs> That's because I didn't shake the bottle. So these paints come. Sometimes the paint will separate, especially if they've been through the winter. Um, just want to go ahead and shake that up really, really well. Um, easy enough to correct, but definitely something that is avoidable if you shake the paint up. And just give this a really good, till it gets dark, because we're using sepia, so this is going to get dark on us. And we're just going to finish up this sepia. And we want pretty much the entire top of this covered in dark brown. And that should do it. Can leave a little bit of white on the belly. We'll probably come back and deal with that. Looks like I've got a little spot here. Just 
push all the rest of that out of the chamber. Give this a good heat set. And now that we're going to be working detail on a stencil, I'm going to move the rest of these out of the way so that we don't get paint on those. Make sure this is in our holder pretty well. Maybe just a couple of darker accents in spots just to kind of give it a little bit different of an effect give it a little bit more depth to the pattern even though we're already dark just a couple of accents on here in that detailed black magenta is really going to pull out some depth for this pattern once we get into the pattern itself it's fairly simple it's just stenciling but getting the background right, the prime areas, and the right shade. Now we've got that little bit of difference in the tone. So I'm just going to give this a good squirt here. Clear that chamber out. And I'm going to kind of work back and forth between a mottled pattern and that um, almost that leopard pattern. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to come with some just basic white. And this is my standard mix. It's the Jacquard mixed with now Golden and Createx, but it was just Createx before. And it's got a pretty thin consistency. It's a little bit chalky, but perfect for what we're going to be doing here. Turning my pressure down to about 20. And then just very lightly come over each section with just a little bit of effort just to get that light background in. Very light. You don't want to make this super, super bright yet because we want a little bit of a difference in our pattern as well. So just super light, real light pressure. You can actually pull this off of the bait a little bit. Just kind of give an over effect. And then just work your way back. And then we'll do the tops. I'm not going to do the bottom on this one. And this is one of Brian's creature features. Just enough so that you can see it. Just real light. So that what you have is this nice background pattern. Now, yep, it's not completely white, but there's a trick to that as well. Now, the neat trick on here is because I already have a dark underlayer and then I've put a little bit of white on top of this, the gold that I'm laying down is really only going to show up on this white. You're still going to very prominently be able to see the rest of the darkness underneath of it. So just a little bit of gold on there goes a long way. Now while that gold is still wet, I've got a little bit of this Comart Opaque Pearlescent. And what this is going to do is this is really just going to bring that darker background back out. And now that we're going over top of the gold, we're going to use this stencil, which is, it's like a leopard stencil, leopard pattern. But we're going to hit this a little bit harder and make sure we keep this down and keep it in place. Because we really want to show
show off the actual pattern on this stencil. finish up all the areas, get this pattern as crisp as you can. So lighter pressure, get your airbrush closer to the stencil than we did on the other one, and hit it at a 90 degree angle, go straight at it. and maybe even angle your stencil as you move around the curve on the body of the bait. leave the bottom of this alone. Now in order to keep that background darker, take the most transparent base layer you have in your collection or reduce some of your browns. This is a sepia, it's a De La Rowney FW. And we're just gonna bring the pressure down a little bit, wanna make sure that's spraying good, it is. And now just take this, and you're still going to be able to see all that, the rest of it behind there. And just kind of move through a little bit in random spots. Just to get that darker color back in the background. Now we're starting to look like a bourbon. Now because the bourbon doesn't consistently look like it's a leopard, we are going to add in just in a couple of spots just to highlight this pattern a little bit of that modeling. We're going to go straight at the bait here, 90 degree angle, and just in a couple of random spots, bring those bright, brighter whites back into the mix. And that also provides depth. When you have various shades of the same color, it really does help your, your depth perception. It kind of brings your pattern a little bit more to life, in my opinion. You guys may have a, a different way of doing stuff. We've got this really cool multi-pattern, multi-stencil that will become this burbot fish. When it's clear coated, this one is going to go on Swimbait Universe. I will probably sell this one. I'm sure there's a lot of northern swim bait fish heads out there. So if you guys are interested, go check out Facebook. In a couple of days, just keep, a, keep an eye out for it. 
I think today is Thursday, April the 8th. So maybe Friday, Saturday. Now we've got a couple of different areas of depth. We've got the meat and potatoes of our pattern in. And I think we have a fish that can be fairly identifiable as a bourbon. Bringing this up into the light for you guys. It's not going to pop as much until we get our clear coat on. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is a bourbon. You guys have asked me for a while now, for a couple of months, to go over a refresher with the clear coat. So I am going to do that at the end of this video. If you guys want to stick around, here comes the clear coat. Uniball Vision Elite Medium Point. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to select a flat artist brush. This will do. It's not a real thick one, so this should go through it. The next thing you want to do is you want to give it a couple of pulls. Make sure that there's no hair fibers coming off that will get stuck on your bait while your clear coat's wet. That's really an annoyance. You should avoid at all costs. It's happened, it happened to me last week, so it's going to happen. Just make sure you don't have any loose brush hairs coming off. This is KBS. They are a partner of mine. I am a proponent of theirs, which is why they're a partner of mine. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. I don't have issues with it. I store it in a glass jar. Now I'm getting this about halfway up the brush. I don't want lots of liquid dripping off of this. It's a very thin liquid. And I'm just on this particular bait, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna get the tail. The tail is fairly thick, the back of this, on bull shads. But we wanna go ahead and clear coat that too. And I wanna run that right up to the edge of this tail fiber. It's not gonna hurt the tail fiber. You don't wanna certainly clear coat the tail because it is hair fiber and it is instrumental in the way this swim bait swims. But you do want it there. It actually kind of serves as a protective layer when that seals up against the hair. Keeps the hair in a little longer, in my opinion. And then we're just gonna go even strokes all the way around, starting at the tail and working our way towards the head of the fish. Nice even strokes, not a whole lot of excess on there. And this will be the, I'm not gonna show you all four coats, this will be the first of four coats that we put on there. It's not going to dramatically affect the weight of this bait. They're very thin layers. It's insignificant, the amount of weight that is added to this. You would probably find a bigger variation in weight on your hooks than you would on the number of layers of clear coat you put on this. You ask what a downside is to KBS. If you don't properly seal the lid that you use, it will get hard on you eventually. Although the newer stuff hardens from the inside out instead of the air triggering the hardening process. So they have, they keep improving it. They make it better and better. I don't think they've done any changes to KBS in a couple of years, at least to my knowledge, to the best of my ability, I'm telling you true. Store it in a glass jar, not a mason jar, one single lid, like this pickle jar or a spaghetti jar. You always wanna put some sort of saran wrap as an extra barrier layer because this will draw air into it. So you wanna seal it well. And it'll last and last. I go through it pretty quick. Uh, I've got a ton of it more down here and the aerosol. I haven't tried the aerosol yet. I keep promising myself that I will. Um, my 
biggest, if there were a, a downside to KBS, it's the dry time. It, it's still a lot behind some of your, like your Aluma lights and things like that. But it's still worth the trade off because of how rock hard this stuff gets. Um, I go back and talk to customers every once in a while. I was just talking to somebody that I painted a Lanciati Psycho Gill in this really crazy gill pattern. And uh, he just bought another bait from me recently. And I went, you know, you'll ask him, you're like, hey, how, how's my clear coat holding up? You know, just, and you know, off topic. And they'll be honest with you, nine times out of ten. Um, and, and I promise you, if you do have issues with clear coat, your customer is going to let you know immediately. Hey, um, I fished this twice and I had some delam issues, delamination. We can pull this off. That was the protective tape over the eyes. And we'll pull this off here. I just cut these over the actual eyes. It's a little bit less hassle to go ahead and use the eyes that come with Bull Shad. They're, they're good eyes. They're pretty hard, solid. And then just continue to paint this clear coat on. Smooth that out. Now this stuff is self-leveling, folks, so you don't need to put it on a wheel and turn it. Um, I can always tell the folks that say, oh, I, I use KBS, but then you see them turning stuff on a wheel. It's like, no, you don't, and why did you tell me you are? So, there are people like that out there. I don't know why. Use what you use. A lot of people like different products. There's a lot out there to choose from. I choose what I choose because it works really well for me, and it has for the past six years. So this is coat number one. It's how I apply. And the other thing is when I'm brushing back down, I'm also, if there's any drips, I'm smoothing those out. And you're less likely to get build up or that little drop at the end of the bait. And you're like, ah, crap, now I gotta sand that down. Not to say that I'm perfect. Uh, I had a customer, I don't know if it was a prep issue of mine, but I'll tell you, I, everybody's human. Everybody's gonna have issues from time to time. Um, so I'm getting ready to repaint a DLAM issue that I had, but it's user error. It's not, I promise you, it's not the KBS that's the issue. Nine times out of ten, it's something that I have not done properly that, uh, that provides that issue. Now, there have been occasions where different mold releases used from what you're used to, so you don't know, and then you're like, oh man, what, what the heck happened here? And, and again, that happens to everybody after a while, if you paint baits long enough. Then I just kind of give this the once over, and I like to have good lighting above me so that I can check to make sure there's no drips. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my take on a juvenile burbot. We're gonna walk it back on camera for you guys to the back of the warehouse. I hope I've been able to teach you guys a little bit today. Um, hope you've enjoyed this program. If you guys want to see more awesome patterns, check out the description below. Check out the links, all of that stuff. It's very early, so I'm going to go get some coffee. I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Thanks for hanging out with the channel. It's always great to see you. Cheers, and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.